Hi guys, so on today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you about something that is super important but not talked about enough in the microbleeding training industry. Um, or if it's touched on in class, it's a little overwhelming, even in a good class, to try to remember everything that was talked about when it comes to sanitation. So we're gonna be talking about something that is super important, which is keeping yourself alive and healthy, keeping your clients safe, and working in a really safe environment. Um, so if that sounds interesting to you and you think you could use some help with setting up and tearing down and cleaning up um, to protect yourself and your clients, then you can keep watching. Um, so basically what I'm going to do today is take you through our setup, the products that we use, um, and then also how we uh, wash hands, tear down, um, how we keep everything safe and clean here at Brow and Bee. What I'm going to take you through right now is just kind of how I would set up for a new client and how I would tear down even though I don't have anybody in the chair. And um, you guys should feel free to ask questions and add your comments um, below. And then before you go, don't forget to subscribe and like our video so you can see more. Um, okay, so Sherry is recording for me. Thank you, Sherry. So she's gonna come a little bit closer. Um, I'm just gonna show you kind of what the area looks like before we begin. Um, again, this is the end of my day, so I uh, haven't like mopped the floor or anything yet, um, but I'm just gonna take you through the setup. So this is what it might look like when I'm done. Um, after every person, I kind of wipe everything down and clean up, which I'll show you guys in a little bit. Um, but first, let's take you to the back. I'm going to talk about something important, which is our hand washing sink. So come with me. Here. Okay, so this is our hand washing sink. Um, this is, you'll notice outside, it's not in our actual bathroom because you don't, normally you're not going to be allowed, uh, according to your health department, which makes sense. You're not going to be allowed to wash your hands in the bathroom where there's tons of germs. So this thing is just for our home makeup artists to wash their hands and do their business. So um, for a client, I would wash my hands, which I already did. And we're going to go ahead and head back over to our station and set up. Okay, so we're back at our station now. And I'm going to walk you guys through our setup first. So I have clean hands. Um, depending on your jurisdiction, you might be asked to go ahead and put gloves on, so I'll do that now. Um, we have a couple of tattoo licenses in different locations, and everyone has a little something different that they want you to do. Um, a lot of times they want you to put gloves on when you actually set up. So we're going to do that. Um, while we're on the subject, the gloves you want to use are some kind of nitrile uh, gloves. Those little clear vinyl gloves that your lunch lady used in the cafeteria are not acceptable because you could puncture them. So those are the gloves that we use, which we get on Amazon. I feel like Amazon should plug this video because that's where I get everything. Um, okay, so you're gonna wanna have some sort of non-porous tray that you put all your disposables on, and we're gonna protect that. So here's the thing, everything that you protect, it's not like medical grade uh, barrier tape and film where like nothing can penetrate it. It's just an extra level of protection in case you have a spill before you do your cleanup with your special grade cleansers. So that being said, what are you gonna use to wrap everything up with? I've seen people use all kinds of things. Plastic wrap is what we use um, for a lot of it. Some people have, um, you can find bags for different things. So I've seen people use, tattoo artists use aluminum foil. Um, so something to give you at least a barrier so you aren't intentionally just letting bodily fluid touch your materials. So pretty much anything that we would touch or put bodily fluids on, we're gonna protect. And I like to use these dental bibs. You can get these on Amazon as well. Um, just because we use a lot of water, um, things spill and it helps absorb things. So that's kind of what our tray will look like. The only other thing I use the plastic wrap for as far as protection goes is to wrap our headrest. Again, you guys have used plastic wrap in life. It's not uh, impenetrable. Um, so again, this is not the only protection. You're gonna have to do some special cleanup when you're done, but it's just an extra layer to give you and your clients a little more room. Okay, so the next big thing, we pretty much wrap everything else with blue barrier tape. You can get them in these giant rolls on Amazon. And this is uh, a little easier, it's thicker, it's easier to work with than plastic wrap, but obviously trying to plastic wrap your whole headrest with this would be awful. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap the handles. Your job is to protect anything that bodily fluid could touch during a session. We obviously cannot bubble wrap the entire chair, um, but this would be an area that might get bodily fluid on it. I touched the light during my session, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap the area that I would touch 
just so that it's protected. Okay, and then I would wrap my handle on my mirror because during sessions, I hand my clients mirrors often. Uh, I touch them with my contaminated gloves, so I wanna make sure that I'm at least trying to wrap this handle to keep it protected. Um, and that is gonna be it as far as my equipment. Um, depending on your situation, I've seen people use uh, chair covers, almost like trash bags um, that cover their chair. If you are someone who would touch your lever, um, I'm not, but let's say you adjust things, you can go ahead and wrap that. Um, so that's pretty much everything we would do to prep. Uh, I'm not going to show you every little thing that we use, um, but I might as well set up for the next client. So we would put Q-tips, anything disposable you're going to put on this tray. Uh, I have a big tip for you to help keep yourself safe. Don't put anything on the tray that holds bodily fluid and noodles um, that's not completely disposable. So your cell phone, your ink, um, anything that you would want to keep, like a pencil. Once it hits this tray, it's open, subject to contamination. What if you get started and you forgot to remove your bottle of numbing and then you put your bloody cotton rounds or um, your needle right on top of it? You have to throw that away, which would get really expensive. You can't clean that, so don't try. Uh, so we're gonna put everything on here. Um, again, we're a totally disposable studio, so everything we put on here is just for this client. We don't, if we throw, if we don't use everything, we just throw it away, which is what you should be doing too. Okay, so this is like a general idea of what our tray might look like, minus our disposable microblade, because I don't have one handy at the moment. I do want to show you kind of a, whoa! I do want to show you guys kind of a handy tip. Um, it's something that we do to help control forgetting uh, to put things on the tray that don't belong. So if you'll come this way, share. Um, I would suggest, first of all, having some piece of furniture um, near your area where you can keep things like your cleaner, tissue, things that you might need to use um, even during a design session. But what we'll do is if there's something I'm gonna use during an appointment that I don't wanna accidentally contaminate, I will keep it in like the contamination free zone. So if you wanna come closer and just show them this, these are the things that we might, we're going to use for sure during a session. Um, but that I don't want to have to throw away. And there are also things that you can't clean. If you're gonna use tweezers on someone, um, you can zoom back out. If you're gonna use tweezers on someone after bodily fluid has been exposed, you really need to throw them away, unless you have an autoclave, which most microbladers don't, which is why we're disposable. Um, barbicide, you'll see barbicide here. I would totally put my tweezers and my scissors in there if I used them before the session began. So if I just tweezed a few hairs, that's totally fine. Um, however, again, if it's exposed to blood, you can't do that, you gotta get rid of it, right? Barbicide will kill, it does a disinfectant, but it's not gonna kill viruses like hepatitis. So we really need to make sure that we're uh, remembering that when we're working. So again, numbing, these are expensive. I would like everything that I'm not gonna throw away uh, over here, so it's nice and safe. Um, so that's what I would recommend as far as that goes. I'll point out just a few more things that seem kind of obvious, but maybe in your training it was left out. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you have a sharps container. It's one of these guys. You can see that there are cartridges for machines, microblades, and razor blades. All of those will go in there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take my gloves off since I just touched that. Um, so at this point, let's say we worked on the client already and we're all done. I'm going to tear some of this down, but I'm not going to be wasteful. If I was all done with my client, this is super important. I see this happen all the time. People will go to clean up and they'll forget to put gloves on. So you want to make sure that when you clean up, remember everything. This, the handle, everything on this tray is fully contaminated and you want to treat every person like they have a very highly contagious bloodborne disease that you can't get rid of. So um, you'll put gloves on. And then you're literally going to ball up everything on this tray except for your blades, which you're going to put in the sharps container. So gloved up, you're going to ball all this up, throw it away. You're going to literally tear all this down, fully gloved up. You'll go ahead and unwrap all your barrier tape with your gloves on, throw it up, throw it away. <laughs> Don't throw it. Don't throw it. That would be bad. And then um, the next, I guess probably the most important step is you're going to use your uh, virucidal, your fungicidal, it basically kills everything. Um, your health department will be very specific with you about what you have to use. We use Cavicide or Cavi wipes. You can get these in a spray. 
I prefer the wipes because I feel like they go further and you don't need to get paper towels to go with it. Um, but you're gonna take these out. Again, I would touch these gloves up. They, it's some very strong chemicals, so I'm literally not even gonna touch this right now without gloves on. But it's super important that you wipe every single thing down. So all these surfaces that had been wrapped, you're gonna wipe them down. Because let's assume that maybe the uh, plastic wrap or the barrier tape was penetrated on accident and then there was bodily fluid and it were to get on those items. Um, and let's pretend that that person had HIV those things need to be cleaned uh, and cleaned well. So what you're gonna do is wipe everything down to where it looks wet. This part gets overlooked a lot, so take note of this, but every um, cleaner that you have is gonna tell you about how long it needs to stay to actually effectively kill the virus. So make sure that you aren't just like wiping everything down and then in a hurry setting up for your next client. It really needs to dry and you really need to make sure that you're following the instructions that are on your container. So. At this point, you've cleaned everything up, you've wiped everything down, but you still have contaminated gloves on. So it's super important that you don't touch anything and that you deglove and immediately wash your hands. Um, I have a lot of artists ask, like, why do I have to wash my hands so many times? Um, just think, what if those nitrile gloves failed and you poked yourself on maybe the needle and you exposed your hands? At that point, again, we're trying to take another precautionary step and wash our hands again. So you're gonna have very dry hands, which is totally fine. That's why the lotion is back there. And um, that's pretty much everything. So you should be taking a bloodborne pathogens course. However, they leave a lot of stuff out. So my biggest tip to close the video is to make sure that you, anytime you're questioning if you should have washed your hands or put gloves on, just do it. It can never hurt to wash your hands too many times or to put gloves on too many times. Um, just basically think anytime you might be exposing yourself to someone else's bodily fluid, or anytime you might be exposing someone's body to contamination, those are the two times that you're gonna make sure you put gloves on and wash your hands before and after. So hopefully this video was helpful. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. If you'd like to see more videos like this or you would like more topics covered, feel free to reach out to me and let me know and I would happily talk about them. See you guys next time.